Hi everyone, I'm Vesela from Playful Nutrition and you're watching Holistic Living in Luxembourg. And today in this video, we're going to talk about cosmetics. And uh, I think this is a very interesting topic because um, oftentimes we talk a lot about food and what we put in our bodies, but cosmetics is such an important aspect as well to living healthy because it is everything that we put on our skin or on our bodies. And there is a lot of information, a lot of confusion, I think, even out there. And I'm super excited to welcome Agnieszka from Jador Bio. Hi, Agnieszka. Hello. <laughs> I'm happy that you're here today. And uh, we're going to talk all about cosmetics, mm -hmm. um, natural cosmetics, and just what to pay attention to when you're buying cosmetics. And I hope you're going to find this interview useful. I certainly am very much looking forward to having the answers to all these questions because those are things that I personally really want to know and I think they're really important when you're making a choice in what products you buy. So um, let's just start by you just maybe introducing yourself a little bit and telling who you are and uh, you started a company called Jador Bio, right? Selling um, online, you have an online store in Luxembourg selling um, natural cosmetics. So. Tell me a little bit about how the idea came into being and why did you decide to start this company? Yeah, so um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Agnieszka and uh, originally I am from Poland. I came here to Luxembourg three years ago, initially to start my career in finance. <laughs> like everybody in Luxembourg, can. yes. <laughs> And then, yes, so I came here with my husband and uh, our life was a typical expat uh, life, uh, I would say, so essentially work, eat, sleep and repeat. Um, uh, so we watched Netflix uh, documentaries just, just for fun in our spare time and uh, we came across some very interesting um, documentaries on food and this is uh, essentially how everything started and I would say my life changed. Um, so it started with uh, food, uh, we went all organic, so we started buying organic food um, uh, because we learned all about you know, modern ag agriculture and how food is essentially important for our lives. Um, and then only after okay, we had a clean diet, uh, I became vegan um, and I thought that okay, my lifestyle couldn't be any more healthier. Uh, then I watched uh, The Human Experiment, mm -hmm. a very, very nice documentary with my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a documentary about toxins and dangerous chemicals that are surrounding us everywhere, uh, also in cosmetics. So then I thought, okay, I ignored this aspect of my life, mm -hmm. thinking that, okay, when I buy a product, uh, um, any product on the shelf, uh, it has to be safe, it has to be tested. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started making and doing research on this and uh, I was just terrified. I cleaned everything I had in my, uh, uh, in my uh, bathroom and yes, I started learning about how to read labels, how to read ingredients. Mm. I did all this research and I also educated my family and my friends, closest friends and then that's how I came up with an idea to create Jada Rio. Yeah. I wanted a shop with uh, where I could pick, you know, any product, and I would know. Okay, it's it's good. Yes, it's uh, it's it will not harm my uh, uh, my health. Mm -hmm. It will not uh, disrupt my uh, hormonal system. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that's how we came up with an idea of Jadar Oh, that's a great story, and it's so true that oftentimes actually companies or any idea actually comes from you looking for a solution in your own life. Yeah. And I think this is also so nice and that's what I love also about your company is that I can go online because I, I'm still educating myself on this whole topic but I've been using natural cosmetics for a long time but I must, must say that I haven't done the extensive research that you have done so there's still a lot of things that I would like to learn and it's just such a, how can I say, like a breath of fresh air yeah. to go on your website and to be have that confidence and trust that you know you are you have those company, uh, those products that I can trust. Yeah. And with this, actually, I was interested to know how. What is the process that you go through when you select the, your the products that can make it to your website? So, mm -hmm. what are your criteria um, for the products that you choose to put on your website? 
And so this is, uh, let's, I would say, the most important thing for, for me and for, for us in, in Jadarville, how to select a product. We don't have many brands yet, we are still a new shop and we are still looking for nice uh, brands which are sometimes uh, recommended to us by, by customers. Mm -hmm. So how do we select products? We are very transparent in this whole process. So we have on, on it, inside our shop, we have a page, I think it's called ingredients policy. Mm -hmm. And then we really go into details of what types of ingredients we get employed, uh, how do we select products. We also came up with this idea of uh, five stamps. So in order to make our customers choice easier, mm -hmm. we stamp uh, products uh, as either 100% natural, organic, alcohol free for customers looking for alcohol free uh, uh, cosmetics, uh, vegan or handmade. Mm -hmm. So this by the sticker you also immediately know okay, See, yeah. yes, if this uh, cosmetic is uh, certified organic or if it contains alcohol. Oh, that's a great idea also yeah. because I guess people have different priorities, maybe yes. somebody who's vegan pay, pays a lot of attention to this is yeah. going to look for that stamp whereas others as you say maybe are sensitive to alcohol yeah so that's actually a great idea to do that it makes also the shopping experience easier yes i mentioned that already that what we put in our body is mm -hmm. so important yeah and what we put and, and just as important probably as what we put in our body so basically the food that we eat um because our skin is such a large it's the largest organ in our body and it absorbs so much so uh, it matters what we put on it yeah so how, what ingredients do you think we should be avoiding? Uh, what are probably the worst ingredients that you can find in very everyday common cosmetics that actually are toxic to our, bo to toxic to our body? So yeah, uh, when uh, I think I, I came across a research which was also really horrifying for me, that, uh, and this proves how our skin is absorbing everything that we put on it. Uh, is that newborns, babies, mm. are being born already with parabens in their system. Yeah, that's horrible. So with, yes, so, and this all is from cosmetics. So I would say top ingredients to avoid. Um, in general, we should, as customers, be really reading the ingredients lists and be reading labels. Uh, even though companies are trying to you know, make it hard for us, because they are placing ingredients list in this super small font somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, at at uh, at the bottom of the pro of the product. But we should be reading that. And okay. if the the ingredients list is like super tiny, it probably means the product is not worth your attention, and mm -hmm. you should not buy it. Okay. But top ingredients to avoid, I would say parabens. We know, we all heard. Yeah. Some companies are trying now to say, okay, they are not maybe that bad but they are uh, found to be uh, endocrine disruptors, so yeah. they are actually are messing with our program, uh, yeah. system. And this is really bad because we hear a lot of stories about, from our friends and from mm -hmm. uh, about infertility. Mm -hmm. there, there is a real problem now with uh, girls, young women being essentially yeah. having problems mm -hmm. with uh, having children. And this is, uh, this is one uh, cause of it. Yeah. Uh, cosmetics that we put in our body, they accumulate in our organs and then this is the consequence. Yeah. So parabens and they are also easy to spot in the uh, ingredient list because it's metal paraben, butyl paraben, everything that ends with paraben. Mm -hmm. So they are easy to spot. Then I would also uh, recommend to avoid um, paraffinum mm -hmm. and mineral oil. Okay. Although mineral oil sounds like a very like natural, natural yes. thing. Yeah. It's actually a petroleum byproduct. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's uh, yes it's a petroleum derived uh, product. So we don't want to be putting gasoline on our face, but companies are using that because uh, it's a very cheap uh, product, uh, and it's uh, it so it like it creates this barrier on our face, which makes it feel like it's hydrated. So this I'm certain you can find in hand creams, uh, face creams, creams. yes. It's, it's so common to be found uh, mm -hmm. everywhere. So paraffinium, it's called paraffinium liquidum or paraffinium, paraffinium walks, something like that, and uh, mineral oil, this avoid. Okay. Also PEG, BHA, BHT, this, all the ingredients I list uh, on our website. Uh, we can also share uh, this somehow, yeah. you know, uh, so that people maybe print this or have the, have the, have it saved on your mobile and then go to a store and you you will cross check. Okay. 
Okay, so that's great to know. Um, but then there's also other traps I find with cosmetics because you have the labels and then mm -hmm. even though you're reading the labels you have all those marketing claims like 100% natural yeah. but natural does not always mean natural yeah no so what sometimes is hidden under that label so natural in fact legally speaking doesn't mean anything so companies uh, this term is not regulated mm -hmm. in the you know, European Union so you can you know any uh, chemical product can be labeled as okay this is a natural cosmetic or botanical or pure plant based mm -hmm. it's you you can just put one natural ingredient and then label you know put it in a green packaging and yeah. this is also a practice called greenwashing so yeah. making actually customer believing that the product is natural or well, it's far it's from not, it yeah, yeah it's far from it okay so uh, this uh, is not uh, regulated so again, the importance of reading labels. So beyond the ingredients that now we know that we should avoid, there are also certain certifications that can help a customer decide whether a product is natural or organic or vegan. And um, those kind of certifications can give us as customers reassurance that we're choosing the right product. But is there anything else that we need to pay attention um, to uh, on those certifications? Um, and beyond that, can we still make a healthy cosmetic choice that is maybe not certified? Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. So uh, I would say if you want to not spend a lot of time making research and educating yourself about ingredients, then it's definitely a good choice uh, to grab for, a, to, to choose cosmetic that is um, certified organic. And there are um, very well known and reputable uh, uh, organic certification bodies such as EcoCert and Soil Association, which they just guarantee that the product is uh, free from um, dangerous uh, preservatives, free from uh, synthetic fragrances, free from dyes, uh, synthetic dyes as well. Uh, and they also regulate the percentage of um, organic uh, plant-based uh, ingredients that uh, have to be in this product in order for it to be uh, certified organic. Yeah. But it's not the only way. Uh, there are lots of small brands which uh, simply cannot afford uh, to have their products certified organic. But uh, their products are uh, super good and they uh, very often have much better uh, ingredients list uh, than the ones certified or, uh, that are certified organic. Okay, that's good to know. So, and, and you use on your website, do you have some of those companies that were maybe small, yes. uh, but they're not certified? Yes, yeah. so we have a lot of, um, and this is uh, what actually also differentiates Stratervio from other uh, oil stores, is that we select um, smaller niche, family-led companies. Which is great. Uh, yeah, and they, they just don't, uh, either they don't want, because they don't want to increase the uh, prices of their products, so they don't want to be certified organic or they can't afford it uh, mm -hmm. for the moment. But they use organic ingredients They are uh, and they use really uh, minimalistic uh, uh, ingredients. So, Yeah, I think that's another maybe tip uh, when you choose ingredient, uh, a cosmetic that you should probably look out for as fewer ingredients as yes. possible, which yeah. is kind of the same as with food when you go shopping, the, the, the lower the ingredient less is, the smaller it is, the better actually yeah. it is for, for the quality of the products that are being used. Yes, of course, and I personally love and I'm fan of this uh, one ingredient uh, cosmetics yeah, yeah. or just, you know, uh, oils which are... We also have one brand um, that is uh, that they have a policy uh, of strict max 7 ingredients. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. then you know what's, what's really in it. Yes. Another ingredient that it's a lot of people talk about uh, and it's, uh, I think has a lot of discussion is fragrance, mm -hmm. yeah. which is one for me that I'm kind of always like, okay, fragrance, what is that? Should we avoid fragrance in general when we're choosing cosmetics? And if so, why? So um, fragrance or um, perfume as well is a, it's an ingredient, it's a mysterious ingredient mm -hmm. that is, uh, companies are allowed to uh, list it with an ingredient list because of trade secret. So essentially uh, they are allowed to do that because they, s they claim that, okay, uh, our uh, you know, uh, perfume formulation is a trade secret. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what's uh, behind it yeah. and no one really knows. 
Um, uh, EWG is an uh, environmental working group, it's a very a reputable mm -hmm. uh, yes, group um, which advocates for clean cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And they made a research and they actually found out that uh, behind this fragrance there are very dangerous uh, ingredients which sometimes they are even not tested for human uh, you know, reactions. So uh, I, I would say we should avoid it. Um, and uh, organic certifications, which what we meant, they guarantee because some natural cosmetics they, they also have a fragrance. Yeah. But then you have a you typically have an asterisk and saying that from natural essential oils, and then you are you are sure that okay, whatever okay. is there is either you know from is from uh, natural essential oils. So you, there is no synthetic ingredients that you should be afraid of. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so even. Not just fragrance, but then looking beyond if the fragrance is made out yes. of essential oils or uh, yeah. something that's from natural origin. Yeah, okay. so on Jadorbio, we, we don't have any uh, cosmetics with synthetic uh, fragrances. So whenever fragrance or perfume is listed and there is no uh, organic certification behind the brand, I ask okay. the brand, okay, are you using uh, natural uh, essential oils? And sometimes actually I, some brands which have nice product range were disqualified already by me because they were using synthetic uh, mm -hmm. fragrances. When you, when you shop for cosmetics and you have all this like super wide range of products for, like from potions and lotions and creams and serums and masks and I don't know what else, um, that it can be, I personally at least I'm wondering sometimes like do you really need all of them? Can we actually strip down the essential cosmetics that we actually need? And if we could do that, what would be the essential, what would be your suggestion of what products should we actually keep at home and maybe others that are just excessive? Yeah, so um, of course it's a good job of, you know, um, you know, brands who are tr really trying, you know, to so that we have a dedicated uh, cosmetic for each centimeter of our body. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to be this way. We have a lot of uh, uh, within natural cosmetics range. There are lots of uh, this multifunctional cosmetics, which you can use on your face, on your hair, on your body. And um, so, I m my skincare routine is very simple. I, in the morning, I use contact sponge to clean my face, mm -hmm. and it also gives uh, the slight exfoliation. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I apply uh, rose mist, which is one ingredient. I love the scent, and it tones the skin. Uh, it's really great, and for all skin types. Uh, then in winter, okay, I would apply some uh, face oil, just because uh, the skin is drier mm -hmm. than in the summer. Um, and then I follow with uh, BB cream, which is uh, which is uh, like it. It is a moisturizer. It is a, a foundation, but yeah. it's also sunscreen. Oh, okay. so yeah. it's super multifunctional. Oh, nice. uh, and then that's that's basically it. Uh, you know, mascara, uh, and you're ready to go yeah. uh, for uh, evening. You you don't need a lot as well, so uh, you can clean your face with uh, oils with a mix mixture of oils, mm -hmm. uh, it will remove dirt, it will remove makeup, um, and then you can use a face serum or face cream, that's it. So we have what, five, five cosmetics yeah. for, for our face? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so keeping it simple and basic, I guess, that's yes. probably the best. Yeah. And then of course, high quality ingredients, that's yeah. the secret. Okay. Yes, we don't need, we really, you don't need a lot. And mm, talking about multifunctional ingredients, I also want to mention, for example, coconut oil, mm. which we can use. Uh, I use it as a hair mask, yeah. you know, once a week, yeah. just on my ends. Uh, and everything. Talking about coconut oil, that's one of the ingredients that I think everybody should have at home to yes. use yeah. for cooking, for dessert making, or even for applying on the skin. But what other ingredients, let's say top five ingredients that you think we should be using? <laughs> um, I already mentioned uh, rose water, uh, okay. so this is uh, something that I think yeah, it's great and it's great for all skins. Yeah. It just you know give, keep, makes you in a really good mood mm -hmm. and it tones skin, it's really good toner which is essentially one ingredient. Uh, then what else? Uh, shea butter, I think it's also great. You can yeah. share it with your baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really pure. It's good for all skin types, even the most sensitive skin. Okay. So it's to moisturize the skin. Mm -hmm. mm, what else? Uh, aloe vera gel. 
-hmm. This is really a good ingredient that would suit a lot of uh, the different skin types, even acneic skin. Okay. I think also for summer it's pretty perfect because it's so cooling and yes, uh, if and you have a bit maybe sunburn even. Yeah, uh, or like for. insect bites. Yeah, it's really soothing. It's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. Uh, for any type of inflammation, it's, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, oil. Yeah, this is a super nice ingredient which is uh, really uh, mm, the, f the formula of it, uh, chemical formula. Uh, let's say it's super similar to human sebum. So it's, uh, yes, so it essentially imitates human sebum. Okay. So it's good for all types of skins, even including oily skin, which uh, then helps to really balance sebum production. Oh, that's funny because usually you would think if you have oily skin, you should avoid all kinds of oils additionally. Yeah, so but this one is really like it, it, I think I have it here as well. Yeah, it, it's drying, it, it dries so fast and it doesn't yeah. leave this oily, like for example, coconut oil. Yeah. I would not recommend it, you know, for a face or, but yes. jojoba oil, it doesn't leave this greasy, the greasy and oily. Yeah. Or putting it coconut oil all over your body and going to sleep on your sheets. Just yes. Think. Maybe not the best. Yeah. Yeah. In that sense. Okay. Yes. Okay. So jojoba to recap. Jojoba oil, chili butter, mm -hmm. coconut oil, coconut oil, rose water. Yeah. And aloe vera. And aloe vera. Yeah. Okay. So these five are the, the five ingredients that we should aim to have. At yes. Home. And mm -hmm. for all skin types, you know, you can also for babies. Yes. They are yeah. so versatile. You can use them uh, on your body, on your face, on your mm -hmm. hair. Okay. Perfect. That's great. Well, Agnieszka, thank you so much. I think you cleared up so much for me because and you broke everything down in a very um, understandable and easy way. So I feel like I have much more knowledge now and I know what to look out for when I'm shopping for cosmetics. So thank you for that. Thank you. And thank you for coming. And I hope uh, you enjoyed the interview as much as I did. Yeah, my first time. But <laughs> yeah, it was fun though. It was yeah. really fun. And um, yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you also find the information interesting. And if you're interested in knowing more about the natural cosmetics that Revneshka is offering, make sure you check out her website, jodorbio.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you're shipping everywhere in Luxembourg? Yeah, so uh, Luxembourg and all over Europe. And all over Europe. So yeah, if you're in Europe, check it out. And I think your products are just also only Europe-based. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that's also nice. I forgot to ask also to mention that you always paying a lot of attention on waste and uh, waste reducing mm -hmm. so your packaging is also really biodegradable which is nice yeah. uh, additionally i think it's a very nice touch on top of everything else so make sure you check out our website mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i'll see you at the next interview next month <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, bye. bye.